What's up guys, we're going to be looking for an SQL vulnerability in the Juice Shop vulnerable web app. And we're going to make use of this particular challenge, provoke an error that is neither very gracefully nor consistently handled. Just as a quick recap, SQL stands for Structured Query Language. And it's a type of coding language which is used to communicate with relational databases. Now to see an example of how this might be used in practice, let's head into the login section of the Juice Shop app. Now we're all very familiar with the idea of a login form. We enter our credentials. Let's just make up some credentials and let's type in a fake password and click the login button. Now what's happening behind the scenes, we'll be able to see this in the network tab. So we'll click the login button here and notice when we click login, we have a request that's made by the browser to the back end and Juice Shop is running node.js as the back end server. We can actually check out the details of this request and we can see that it's a request that submits a JSON object and very simply as part of that JSON object we have email user at user.com password password. When the back end receives this JSON object as part of the login request and it knows it's a login request because of the URL. In fact, if we check out the headers tab, we can see it's being sent to rest user login. So the backend receives this specific request. It knows it's a login request. It then looks for that JSON object and taking that JSON object, it runs an SQL query and it's asking the database, we're looking for this particular user, user at user.com. And here's the password that's been submitted. Is this the right password? Of course, in this case, it's the wrong password. And that's why we get this response invalid email or password. Now, if you look at the login window, we can see that that response is reflected to the page, no doubt using JavaScript. Now the functionality we see at this stage is completely standard. There's no obvious security vulnerability here. It is correct for the page to inform the user that there's a problem with the email and password so that the user can try again. We are aware that there's some type of database query likely running in the background, but that's a black box to us at this stage. We don't even know which type of database is being used at this stage. And we certainly don't have access to the specific SQL query that's being sent to the database. Now here's something that you can try. We're going to send a payload of a single quote, and this can potentially have a breaking effect on SQL queries, which have not been configured correctly. You can also try the payload with a double quote. Now, just because this doesn't produce an error, doesn't mean that there's not an SQL problem or vulnerability. Having said that, this is usually a great way to start and quickly test if there's an obvious SQL vulnerability. So let's send this payload of a single quote. Now notice that the login button is grayed out until we also fill in the password field. This is basically just JavaScript or front end verification. We could actually bypass that by constructing our query directly, but that's presumably a lot of work when we could just type in a password to the password field. We pass the JavaScript verification. We can now submit our request to the back end by clicking the login button. Pay attention to the network tab over on the right hand side where we'll see the response to our request. Now this time we're getting a different response. Notice our first response was a 401 HTTP status. If we hover our cursor over that, the network tab will tell us that the 401 HTTP status refers to an unauthorized request. In other words, the server is deliberately returning that specific HTTP status to tell us that it didn't like our credentials. So what about that 500 HTTP status? You can see it stands for internal server error. So we've provoked an error with that payload we've submitted. Now, in some cases, you'll just get an error message back to say that there was some type of problem 
please contact an admin. And that's completely fine. If we look at the response to this request, however, we don't get that. In fact, what we get in the response is a fairly detailed JSON response detailing the specific problems that occurred with the SQL query. Firstly, we can see that the database being used is SQL Lite. And secondly, we can see the specific SQL query that was sent to the SQL Lite database. Select all from users. So we know there's a users table in this database where email equals. And then we have three single quotes there. Now, why do we have three single quotes? Normally, we would just have two single quotes that would be enclosing the email that's been submitted as part of the login request. But our login request in terms of the email was a single quote. So we have a single quote enclosed by two other single quotes. The problem with that from an SQL point of view is that a single quote is a special character in the SQL language. It's a character that's used to designate the start and end of a string. Now, if we manage to inject a single quote into the middle of a string, the effect that that will have on the SQL query is it will cause the string to end prematurely. So what we actually have is where email equals an empty string and then the start of a new string which is a problem because the SQL query is not going to make any sense. The database will not be able to handle that query and it's going to provoke an error. Now these type of error messages do have their use. If we're a developer here, we can look at this, figure out what's going wrong with our code and why it's not producing an acceptable SQL query. And we can use this information to help us fix our app. However, this type of error message should not be given to an end user because it can greatly increase the efficiency with which they are able to construct injection attacks. Ideally, those SQL queries on the server are a complete black box. So we would essentially have to guess the types of queries that are taking place on the server in order for us to be able to extract information from the database. But now all of the guesswork has been removed. We can see the specific query that's being sent to the SQLite database, and we can carefully construct our input here to generate queries that give us information from the database we shouldn't be able to have access to. Keep in mind that there are a number of different problems here. The problem we're actually seeing right now is vulnerable error disclosure. And that's because an error that the user shouldn't see is being made available to the user. We are seeing a primitive form of SQL injection where we were able to inject that single quote into the SQL query. That doesn't really get us very far. It just gives us an error message. But it's an indication that there might be a lot more we can do to extract data from the database that we shouldn't have access to. In this case, there's a very good chance we would be able to enumerate the entire database. So everything that's stored on the back end, including user information, all of their details, some of which are private, we can extract them from the database simply by using the vulnerability in this login form but more specifically, the SQL query that's taking place on the server. Finally, another vulnerability we see here is the lack of escaping vulnerable input. In most systems that are running a database on the back end, this specific payload won't break them. And that's because the application has been programmed to handle special characters like the single quote and not inject them directly into the query that's being sent to the database it is possible to safely use such characters as the single quote as part of an SQL query. We simply need to escape them first, which in SQL terms basically means to rewrite them so that they have a backslash before them, which is referred to as an escape character. 
The two characters combined are referred to as an escape sequence. So in recap, there's at least three vulnerabilities taking place here. We have this vulnerable error disclosure. We have the non-escaping or sometimes referred to as sanitization of user input. And finally, we have this SQL injection vulnerability where we were able to inject a single quote into the SQL query, which completely breaks the query in this case. As a final takeaway, remember that you can run a basic test on forms that you run into by either using the single quote or double quote payload. But remember, you should only really do this on sites that you own or have explicitly been given permission to test.